choose New York. Run from Atlanta, <laughs> run. Y'all, I'm currently on probation. <laughs> I can't do anything. From training until one year on my anniversary, I made If you're here, can you subscribe? I just gave you my entire salary. Na -ni -na -na -na. Top girl from Atlanta. Na -ni -na -na -na. Nani, you a star girl. You will have it all. Booking flights around the world. Na 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 na. Oh, Nani, you a star girl. You will have it all. Go ahead and show it off. Na 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 na. So are you talk? <laughs> <laughs> it has been forever and I am finally ready to sit and talk to y'all about how I really feel about being a flight attendant. But first, I'm gonna need some coffee. So I'm gonna change my clothes, I'm gonna go get some coffee, and then we're gonna have a talk. All right guys, I am back and I have a chai tea. I was even gonna fake it with a coffee mug and I was like, that's way too much effort. <laughs> so today's video is going to be me talking about my flight attendant experience. Today is currently June 22nd. I believe I started on a 21st or 22nd, March of 2021. Um, you guys, keep me honest, go back. I have literally the day that I did my interview on my page, so you guys know, but it was March of 2021. I just don't remember the exact date. I wanted to talk to you guys about my year as a flight attendant and just all the things that I feel like you guys have asked me. I am going to do a Q&A, I guess at the end of this, where you guys can leave questions down below. And two weeks from now, I will try and do a follow-up. I'll try and at least wait until I have a good amount of questions. The thing that I'm gonna talk about in today's video are the money, because I feel like that's what y'all wanna know. I'm gonna be talking about my happiest moments, my saddest moments, if you see me looking down and looking at my phone. Atlanta versus New York, you guys. I, I've obviously been based in both. Um, you guys know what company I work for. I'm gonna tell you the difference, at least for my company, on those two bases. Advice that I have, pros and cons of the industry in general, what I would have done differently, questions that I feel like have been asked a lot, um, and then obviously giving you guys chance to ask questions, and the things that I feel like are some necessities. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is money. Y'all seem to love to talk about money. I found a lot of people asking questions. On my last video, I broke down those first couple months, how much money I was making, and people were like, why was March so much lower than everything else? March was lower because I was still getting training pay. My airline does get paid for the training. I know some people get like a per diem. I have friends that work for JetBlue and they get a like per diem, um, which they said was a lot lower than ours. But yeah, everybody has a different way of money. And some places don't pay you at all. <laughs> so starting with the actual money I have made, I'm just gonna make it so simple because I know the number is what people care about. How much money have I made in a year? The total amount of money that I made in my first year, so March to March is what I'm counting guys, not like once I started flying, but March to March, I made $58,354.11. That is pre-tax. I am giving you guys that number because after taxes is gonna depend on you. If you're filing exempt, your checks are going to be significantly higher than mine. It is very, very different for every single person flying, but that is the number. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you, the month, the amount of money, and how many hours I was flying. And before I even tell you guys this, I'm gonna show you the list of ways that we're getting paid that I don't want you to obsess over the number. So we get paid holiday pay, uh, flight pay, international pay, time away from base pay, um, holding pay, boarding pay, 8 day guarantee pay, if you were not um, assigned a trip, flight lead pay, which has been significant in my amount of money because that is the only thing I fly, reroute pay, and multi-leg premium pay, which I try to avoid, this one has it, but working four legs, you do get additional money and additional boarding pay because you're boarding more flights. So when I'm telling you guys the amount of hours that I'm flying, it is only talking about flight pay but also in that some of those flight pay hours i was getting paid lead some of those flight pay i was getting paid international it is very different but i just want to give you guys perspective because everybody is so curious about the amount of money that was made it was approximately sixty thousand dollars in my first year of flying it is a little frustrating for me 
because I am currently making less money than my last position, but I do believe that the perks of leaving my corporate job was worth it. If I would go back in time right now and do it all over again, I would still make the decision to become a flight attendant. But I'm gonna go through each month and tell you guys the amount of money that breaks down a part of that 58,000 whatever and the amount of hours it was counting. The only time I won't count is training because I don't know the approximate number of hours. So March, you guys know from my last video, the first couple months you guys are gonna know was $616.30. I was in training. The way that I survived while I was in training was I left my old job in December of last year, I think it was December or January. I started training in March, so three months later, I had $7,000 in my 401k. I used that to survive on while I was making it to training. I thought I would get a training date in January. You will not get a training date as soon as you get your work CJO. It does not happen that way. Everybody thinks it happens that way and they're waiting months. Prepare, that's all I can say. 85 hours of training. Um, April, $1,540.75 with 212 hours in, well, 212.30. May was when I actually started flying. May, $4,274.58. 96 hours was how much I flew. 96.01 hours is how much I flew. June, $5,869.31. That month flew. 131.31 hours. July, $6,161.10 flew 125 hours and 30 cents. August, $4,170.82 flew 88 hours and 57, 88.57. September, $5,612.94 flew 126.47 hours. October, $4,328.47, flew 90 hours or 90.58 hours. November, $5,358.14, 118.48 hours. You guys are seeing less hours, more money, I'm just saying. December, 4,654 dollars and 54 cents flew 94 hours january five thousand nine hundred and ninety eight dollars and 88 cents flew 127.49 hours february three thousand four hundred and fifty three dollars and 47 cents hours 73.01 march which would have been my one year anniversary six thousand three hundred and seventeen dollars and eighty one cents 129.44 hours. That's how much money I made in a year. Now I will give a little bit more of, I guess an idea. I was in May, um, I obviously got in an accident. You guys saw in Hawaii, I got injured. I was on disability, <laughs> which is a whole nother topic guys. But I wanna let you guys kind of give perspective. It was based on like the last 13 weeks of me flying. And based off of that, I was making $725 a week. Um, that obviously is gonna differ per person. And I think probably is based on how long you've been flying because if you've been flying longer, you make more money and you may have better trips just all that so um i made a good amount of money in this first year i mean it was amazing but also it was not what i was used to but i do feel like i had way more experiences and it equals the amount of money if that makes any sense i flew to dubai uh people like to leave halfway through the video if you're here can you subscribe i just gave you my entire salary I feel like that deserves a subscribe. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stick on that. I was gonna say, is there something I should say to like counteract that? No, subscribe because I gave you my salary. We're close, we're friends now. And now on to the other topics. So I wanna talk about my happiest moments since being a flight attendant. Honestly, all of my international trips were my happiest moments. I had so many amazing moments. I got to fly to Rome and Milan. Getting to travel with my closest friends and just meeting so many amazing people. I think being in a corporate job, I was never around a lot of people. Um, I was around the same people every day. I am so not a go out girl. Y'all see, I'm 
I'm chilling. I'm here. I will be in that spot once this video is up. I like being indoors. I am like an extroverted introvert. I can be extroverted, but I like to be by myself. So I definitely think this job got me out of my comfort zone and meeting new people. I've actually had friends that I actually hang out with um, and gotten really, really cool with. And I feel like if you are a person that is kind of in your show or want to meet more people and you like you don't know how, this is an amazing career for that because you just meet so many awesome people. Being based in Atlanta, obviously everybody that I fly with is likely from Atlanta. It's just the thought of like having these people that are close to you and that are really, really cool. There are so many young flight attendants. I'm 29 now, my birthday passed, I'm 29. And they're, everybody is like, between the ages of like 25 and 32, the good majority. And I think that it's popular with us because we don't have any responsibilities. A lot of us don't have kids. A lot of us just wanna travel and see the world. So it's the career that works for us. So I think it's the majority of us. But yeah, so I just feel like it's been an awesome experience just because I've been able to make money and see the world. Is that not a happy moment in itself? Like being able to see so much of the world and just get to know yourself. I feel like I've gotten myself, gotten to know myself so much in this year. It's been a blessing, honestly. And I've had some very, 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 very rough moments <laughs> since flying. And honestly, I just feel like it's made me grow into a whole new woman. Like, I don't know, just getting to experience so many new things has been the highlight of this past year. Um, and then just getting to meet so many amazing people and grow within myself. And then talking on my saddest moments, honestly, I have <laughs> never, I will, I will say this, I have never in my entire life had issues with anxiety. I've never had issues with depression. And I definitely feel like this job has pushed certain limits um, that maybe every person cannot handle. And the reason why I wanna talk about that is because I have been in a lot of, um, very lonely situations. And I, I feel like that kind of counteracts what I just said, but it's because if you are a person that is used to being around people, I'll give an example. My roommate, while we were in training, loved her. She was very young. She was 21 when, I think she was either 21 or 22. And she was used to always being around her family, always being around her friends. Every single day when we came back into the room while we were in training, obviously had my roommate. Um, she was always on the phone, always on FaceTime, always like, I need to see somebody like, and even after just a few weeks in training was like, dang, I miss my people. Like, and that is, I feel like a very good representation of this job is you will spend a lot of time alone. Hence, in a hotel room by yourself. I kind of love that time. I, I realize I thoroughly enjoy it now, a year later, I enjoy this time now. Cause like, say for example, I'm at home and me and my mom aren't the greatest. I can be by myself in a hotel room or like just get some chill time. Or do you, if you write, if you paint, like certain time, like this is like an ideal time to focus on you. Or like if you're working on a business, if you are working on entrepreneurship or something, perfect time to focus on you. But for a lot of people, if you are not naturally, I don't wanna say naturally a happy person, but if you naturally deal with those kind of issues, this might be a huge trigger for you. And the reason why I wanna mention it is because it is not talked about enough, the amount of flight attendants that unalive themselves. It is something that is sent emails. When in the beginning, I was sent emails about it almost all the time and I didn't really understand because I'm like, this job's amazing. Like, why would people want to do that? It is something very, very serious and very real. I feel like it's worth mentioning. Mental health can take a toll doing this job. I've never had any sort of signs of anxiety, depression, anything to that nature. And this job fully brought it out of me of something that I've never, ever, ever felt before. Um, and it's, it's just extremely isolating at times if you are a person that likes to come in here and close the door and not speak to anybody or just feel like, oh my God, I don't have anybody or I'd like to be experiencing this with somebody. The plus side is you can counteract that because you get a companion pass, right? Like you get to have somebody fly with you that can be on your benefits and they could come to your layovers with you, but they will not be able to be there all the time. So just the thought that this job, you will be by yourself. Um, it can be a pro or it can be a con, but I think it's something worth mentioning that if you, well, you could be a person like me who's never experienced anything and then all of these hard, hard emotions come, 
or you can be a person that already experiences these things, in which case it might not be the best option. And I just want to bring that up because I love my job because the fact of they give us free counseling sessions. I think they take mental health very, very serious. Um, you get 12 free sessions a year for each problem that you have. So if you feel like you have anxiety, 12 sessions. If you feel like you have depression, 12 sessions. If you lost somebody and you have grief now, um, you could get 12 sessions. If you, you know, are dealing with family issues now, you could have sessions. If you're going through a divorce you can now have sessions so it is literally like meant to focus on your mental health there are like peer support groups there are all these things to help you but I just have to bring awareness to some of the harder times that I've had adapting were definitely um being alone and dealing with very 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 bad anxiety to the point that i was prescribed a depression medicine um i never ended up taking it because i'm just the type of person that i am Woo, love the lord um and i just prayed on it and i really took time to take care of myself i found that when i am not flying back to back to back to back to back i'm happier <laughs> i am not depressed i am not anxious it is the times when i'm flying these super high i don't want to go back into it but these super high months it is not all it's cracked up to be babes it is not the money is beautiful and then guess what your mental health will suffer you have to take a break you have to take time for yourself and i think that was the biggest thing for me in my first year of adapting is realizing i needed to put my mental health first but yeah so that's something i definitely wanted to just discuss on because it is super 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 important and um yeah we just have to we have to take a lot more care about our mental health like that's just it's just so 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 important another sad moment that i did have um in the process of training and uh getting on the line is i did lose my dog uh, max and i don't know if i showed him a lot i know on my video where i got ash i did show him he's my little oldie max was getting extremely old i mean he was like 14 years old and i lost him in may and i think it was a sad moment because i was flying and i was working and my mom called me and was like he has to get put down and i'm like do not put him down without me there and i had to get time off from work and go home and i think it's just like a big thing that people don't realize now obviously you can call off from work but um that you might not be there for moments or you may not have a lot of time for healing um while you're going through things because you're either gone or things could happen while you're not there and you know moments with your kids when you're not there and i obviously like i just feel like it's just so important to really think about the things that come with this job outside of the pros <laughs> um i have my best friend who her entire family works for another this is not lexi but another friend and um she finally decided to join and become a flight attendant she uh graduated i think like three months ago and is currently out on short-term disability for depression so it's just something that is like so serious to talk about so serious to like know what you're getting into with the career it's not all travel glamour and beauty like this job is a lot and it's not for everybody so want to talk about my happy moments but wanted to mention my sad just so people did understand the difference of what this job can be next topic we're going to talk about atlanta versus new york based options y'all i talked about new york so much when i was um coming out of training i was so 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 excited because i have always wanted to live in new york y'all i've always wanted to live in new york i was so freaking excited y'all to be able to live in new york for the first time but also have the forceful push that I did not have an option not to live there. So I was able to go and I got a crash pad. I got some lifelong friends. It's just like been an amazing experience, like meeting all these new awesome people. Um, I have a bunch of friends that I met in that crash pad that I don't even have pictures with, but it was an amazing experience living in New York and being with those girls. We had a mouse. I don't know if I ever mentioned that. Yeah, I did. I did mention that, that we had a mouse that was creeping around and like it was a mouse. Luckily, it was not a rat. It was a mouse. Um, I do feel like I don't know that I could do a crash pad again, and that has nothing to do with um, the girls or the crash pad. It just was simply the fact of being around so many people all the time. Amazing experience, just loved it. But I did feel like I didn't have um, a support system in New York and obviously going through the new changes of flying, I felt like just really, really isolated being in New York, just feeling like I had no family, like I lost my dog. Like it was just literally so much going on when I was in New York that I was like, it's time 
to go home to Atlanta. And I just missed home. I missed Georgia. Like, I love the way Georgia feels. Like, when you have a home, you just know when you're there and it just feels right. And Atlanta is that for me. So I did go back home. But boy, y'all, have I had a eye opener since being in Atlanta. If I am basing my experience solely on flying, solely on being a flight attendant, and I know that's what you guys want to hear and what you want to like know about, choose New York run from Atlanta, <laughs> run as far as you can. And the reason being is because New York, whoever is in crew scheduling, whoever's making those schedules, beautiful. Beautiful, high time, no sits, just amazing schedule builds all the time. Everything's around 18 hours for those like two days, just beautiful, 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 beautiful trips. Um, everybody who is in New York right now that I, you know, was friends with when I was based in New York, I follow all of them on Instagram. All of them are traveling internationally every week. Have y'all seen me international since I've been in Atlanta? Have y'all seen me? I went to Lagos and I went to Paris. Y'all, I have not been international. I did 12 international my first eight months. I am like, y'all, I do not just get international being in Atlanta. Atlanta is a very, very, very senior base for my company. If you're debating, and you have any question, New York is the better base. Now I will say that obviously if you are new, commuting is a very big deal. And I think that was the biggest thing of why I wanted to come back to Atlanta is because I did not want to commute. <laughs> I did not want to commute. And what I mean uh, by commute is if you are, say for example, me, I live in Atlanta and I am based in New York. If I would have stayed that way and moved back home to Atlanta, I would have to take a flight from Atlanta to New York to work my actual flight. That is so much of your own time that you're losing trying to adapt to a schedule. But the reason why to right now in this day, like today, I would want to be New York based is because um, the schedules at people at my seniority, they have weekend off. And in about two years, they will have no A days, which means no days on reserve at all. Um, and that is worth it to me. So I definitely feel like within the next couple years, I will move back to New York. I don't know if it'll be next year if I will move back to New York, but I definitely will not be an Atlanta-based flight attendant. I won't. Um, the reason why I can't go back to New York and da 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 da, I will talk to you guys about this because I swear everyone's gonna stress out. And if it's happened to you, I'm just gonna be extremely transparent because I'm a person who just does not care. I was written up in my first six months on my, to call it your fly right, fly right, um, which is the time where you cannot get in trouble in your first six months. I was written up and extended. Um, and I was extended from, I was supposed to end in September, wait. I lie. I can't really remember. To be honest, I, I can't really remember if I'm if I'm being completely transparent. It was pretty much like whatever the six months was. Actually, I think it was November 6th was my official six month date because that's when I transferred to Atlanta. But I they allowed me to transfer, but I was still on probation. And I think that's what it was. Got out of that probation, y'all. And then got on another probation and got extended for 18 months. Y'all, I'm currently on probation. <laughs> I can't do anything. I can't be late, can't be sick. Can I do anything? The reason why I want to talk to you guys about that is because I just don't want people to stress it as much. I know at least 15 flight attendants just around my seniority that that were extended. And if you talk to any senior mama, they were like they were extended too. It's one of those things where it's like, don't stress it. Do your job. But in the very beginning, I was getting sick all the time. Um, it is unfortunate, but they don't care if you're sick. You need to go to work. But it is one of the things where like, if you are not feeling well as a flight attendant, I don't necessarily want to talk about this, but you need to find a, a, a doctor's way of like FMLA to make sure that it is known that you are sick. Talk to a flight attendant about it and they'll give you details about what I'm talking about. But it is definitely something that um, will help you in the long run because it is not played. You getting sick, you calling out all the time. It is not okay and it is not the move. Um, if you're not calling out with your PPT, which is using um, money that we get paid, pay personal time to take off. No, 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 mama. But um, yeah, don't stress too much about the write-ups because it's gonna happen. Yeah, I definitely noticed in Atlanta, it's a lot stricter. Atlanta is like the Mecca. It is the perfection of what a flight attendant for my company should look like. Um, it is 
extremely extremely to the book and to the t and most of the flight attendants there are a lot older have been there for 50 something years 25 plus years and they are following the book to a t so um it's definitely like a lot of a stricter base but um yeah i just don't i wouldn't stress it too much if, if something happens talk to your fsm talk to your friends you'll you'll kind of get the gist of it once you're in there but like i said y'all new york was a beautiful base I want to go back to New York. Um, my point in saying I was extended was I cannot, while you're extended, you cannot change your base. So that means that I am stuck in Atlanta until my probation is up, which is not until 2024. It's just one of those things. You'll find what base works best for you. Um, if you're coming out of training, you may not have a choice where you go. They're going to send you wherever. Um, but I will say for my company, the most junior bases are Minneapolis, Boston, and New York in that order as of right now. Um, so if you think about it, babes, Mini, which a lot of people don't want to live in Mini or Boston. Boston is very, very hard to find crash pads and stuff like that. But, um, a lot of people want to do Mini and that is because after a year, a lot of people are without eight days. I personally don't want to live in the snow and I, there's no amount of anything, anything that would get me to move to Mini or commute to Mini. I don't want to be there, but I want to talk to y'all about New York and Atlanta. New York is definitely the superior base. Atlanta is amazing for not having to commute. I would tell you whatever, wherever you live, choose something where you don't have to commute. If you're not willing to move to the city, I wouldn't necessarily do it, especially not in the beginning because you don't want to get extended like me. That's all I have on bases and um, New York versus Atlanta. Like I said, that was pretty much all of that and then my advice stuff. But if y'all do have questions, cause I'm going to skip, um, the questions that I've been asked. I feel like I actually answered a lot of them <laughs> that y'all asked me already just just in regularly talking but I do have three more topic or like topic thingies that I have and that is the pros and cons of the industry and what I mean is just the pros and cons of like being in the a flight attendant in general not just for my company but in general, the pros y'all, you get to fly wherever the heck you want in the whole wide world. And it's so funny because a lot of people are like, well, what if your company doesn't fly there? We can fly another company that does fly there because they're all partnered together. And yeah, I, I, you could, I literally could fly whatever airline you're thinking of. I could probably fly them. Like even the little smaller baby airlines, like Copa Airlines, because a girl in my um, training class flew for Copa. We could fly for Copa Airlines, or not fly for them, but like go and fly using Copa. I flew to Dubai and I flew um, on Emirates. You could use your benefits and fly wherever the heck you want. That is definitely a perk of the industry. You meet so many awesome people. Dating is super beneficial if you are a long distance girly like myself. I have mainly dated, I think, <laughs> interna not internationally, I've mainly dated long distance my entire life. I literally could think of like three relationships, maybe four that I've dated that they live in my actual city. Everybody else has been far. So like being somebody like me, um, if you date somebody who is far, you get to fly to their city. You could just preference to um, like only go on that layover. When I tell y'all, I literally was flying to Philly only for like two months. <laughs> like it literally is one of those things where you could fly and kind of like date or if you're a single and you like want to just date around, you literally can meet people in any city you're in different cities all the time just change your freaking dating location being a flight attendant is just awesome you're gonna have so many amazing experiences you're gonna meet so many people you're gonna have so many friends you're gonna be able to like go and like it's so funny because i went to milan and then literally a couple weeks after i went to milan i saw that this super popular spa where there's like rain inside of the actual spa it's actually in Milan. And I was like, bro, I literally could go tomorrow if I wanted to, to go to Milan. And this is like I said, it's for any airline, but when you're working for an airline, it's legit like, bro, I'm, I'm craving beignets in seafood gumbo today. I literally can take a flight to New Orleans and get food and fly back home. Like, I just feel like it's amazing, amazing, amazing benefits to being a flight attendant. Um, and I just love that about the industry. I will say that the cons about the industry are obviously what I mentioned before. They don't really care about anything other than you showing up to work. So it's like one of those things where it's like, if you do have things in your family, they don't really care that it's your birthday that weekend that they schedule you. They don't really care that it's Christmas. It's just, you have to be flexible. And, and I think that's the biggest part of this job. And obviously as you work, like my first year, I didn't work Christmas actually. I did not work Christmas. Um, I got off at 
two o'clock, two o'clock on Christmas Eve and did not work Christmas. And then I also was off on um, Thanksgiving. And, and that's something that as a year one person, you may not be able to do. And I was in Atlanta. I really shouldn't have been able to have that off, but I was able to get rid of it because I had a lean, a lean on uh, Thanksgiving. And then I just switched around some things for Christmas. But honestly, like it was, it was not as bad as you think it is. Like it's honestly not as bad as you think it is. And it's like super flexible. And so it's one of those things where it's like, I could choose to work every day and only get one day off for like a week, one day off a week or one day off every two weeks um, and make a lot of money. But I also could choose to work the bare minimum and have multiple days off in a month and have like 16 days off in a month. So I feel like it's super flexible. You could also like work two weeks straight and get two weeks off. Like you just have to be able to work your schedule. The sun is killing me now. <laughs> but yeah, there's just so many perks and pros and cons to the industry. But like I said, overall, overall, I love, um, I love what I do. I have to say that. So the next thing that I said or put on here was what would I have done differently? Boy, I would have stayed in New York. I really think that I wish I had figured out a way to um, make my situation work um, and not get so overwhelmed emotionally. And I probably would have stayed in New York and I would have a lot better schedule, but I wasn't willing to hold out and I left and I had to learn that lesson. I don't regret it because I'm the type of person that I'd rather learn the hard way and then know the lesson than never get the lesson. So I'm fine with how everything turned out, but I definitely would have probably stayed in New York. I also would have had more money saved prior to training. I feel like if I wouldn't have been so rash and quit my job as soon as I got a CJO, <laughs> I literally quit like shortly after. Um, I feel like I would have been a lot more prepared because I would have probably had around 8,000 by the time I left my job. And if I would have left right before training rather than months before training, I would have had $8,000 to last me for six weeks and still had money to move to New York and everything. I had an amazing family system set up like going in. I had my stepdad who paid money and i'm so grateful for it but paid for my deposit and my first two months i think of my crash pad so that was really awesome to have like a prepaid like flight attendant place that i had to live i immediately had that set up um i did use my 401k to buy all of my like bags um so that haul you guys saw a lot of that was bought with my 401k money but i definitely feel like i would have saved a little bit more because all of that money was gone before training and i wish i would not have quit i if you are asking for any sort of advice i would work all the way up to the day of training and the hard part for me was that was still a lot of work <laughs> i was working a corporate job y'all like i was gonna have to do a lot of work to um get that done hold on i'm gonna close this because i'm like i'm dying i just don't want it in my face i would have definitely had a little bit more saves and i would have not been so rash and quitting my job i would definitely work all the way up until the day and i think that was hard for me because i was working a corporate job i knew it was going to be a lot of work because i was in sales it was a lot of accounts i was going to have to do up until then like a lot of a lot of a lot of accounts and also i felt like i was setting them up for failure because we work about two months out in uh sales or our calls or whatever if i would have stayed until march they would have already been assigning me may and i just felt like i didn't want to do that to them when before summer started they could have already had that stuff up and the busiest time was in the summer and i just didn't want to leave them high and dry right in the summer so um i did quit pretty soon after getting my cjo um but i would have definitely stayed working so if you can stay working stay working and definitely have enough money and i would have paid my bills um up for the entire time I was in training. Training is very, 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 very stressful. Um, it is very easy, but it is stressful because you're thinking about a career that you're going into and you're like, I've given up everything. I've already quit my job. I'm here. If I don't make it, I'm screwed. And there were people that were sent home. I had a friend that was sent home during training. And so it's one of those things where it's like, you have to be on your P's and Q's. You have to be well prepared. So I definitely would have been a little bit more prepared with my money. Um, I also probably would have, I'm not even going to say that. I was going to say I would have stayed home and not did the living on the actual, uh, I was going to say the campus, but we had like actual like hotels or whatever. But honestly, I don't regret that because I met and, and became close to so many people during that time because I did stay there versus like leaving. I feel like I wouldn't have been as close to people had I left. So yeah, so that's really the main thing is like money and being prepared that I would have done differently. 
and then I probably would have taken um, my mental health a little bit more serious because I definitely feel like that was something that was stress to us it is definitely stress to us they definitely will talk to you in training and out of training about um mental health and what people have done um and it, it just wasn't i didn't take it as serious as i should have and i definitely would have um done that so i didn't end up in a position because i am a very 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 like godly woman and i don't i would never ever ever harm myself let me let me say that ever if it, if i ever went missing or something happened to me i promise i didn't do it like i swear i'm a very happy person i put god first i literally pray if i ever get to a really really bad point i am praying but there are people out here that will um and i definitely feel like if some people had been in my same point they might have take it serious that's all i have to say and then the very last thing that i have I feel like I've been all over the place, but I'm kind of a hot mess express all the time. My last things that I have are just um, the necessities that I said that I'm like, y'all need this. Four wheels. Let's talk about it. Because when I came on the line, I swear to y'all, I was told all the time that two wheels is a superior carrier. Like if you're going to get your like carry on or whatever for working to get a travel pro. Well, let me just start there. Travel pro, get a travel pro. Do not waste your mind, like money on these like cheap little bags. You're gonna be replacing them forever. Travel Pro, they fix it if something's wrong with it. Like they'll fix your actual bag. Like it's just a, like an amazing bag. For as much wear and tear I've had on this bag, it is still like new. Like nothing's happened to it. Nothing. I literally spilled nair in it. Like so many things have happened. Like and it's it's still an amazing bag. I will probably talk to you guys and do a full video on like the necessities that I feel like I need as a flight attendant. Um, on a different video and maybe show you guys new things that I've bought as like a year in what I feel like the necessities are because some of the things that I talked about in my first video I'm like I'd never even use like that little door alarm that door alarm ain't made it into not one layover <laughs> definitely four wheels everybody's stressed so much about having two wheels and like it's better balance and blah 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 blah, blah. no y'all four wheels is where it's at because the reason why I love four wheels is because I'm the type of person if I'm walking through the airport I will literally rest my hand I'll have my coffee like this rest my hand on my bag and roll it like this through the airport and you know what the girls with two wheels are doing and the guys with two wheels are doing this how can you hold your coffee and do this I mean you can hold it like this and then do this but if I have my bags and everything I literally open hands i got food in this hand rolling with this hand i just feel like it's so beneficial having four wheels the biggest thing with four wheels i feel like people say that it like topples over but the way that i counteract that because i feel like all the bags topple over if i'm being real um but the way i counteract that is all of my bags like if you'll see a lot of flight attendants they use like the clips um which i think i might have shown in my flight attendant haul or they use the j hook which is like a hook that you put on the front of your bag where you can place another bag on all of that is putting forward weight on your bag to make it go like this like if you have a two wheel bag I do feel like it's a little bit more stable for like a J hook because you're dragging it. I do not like having to drag it up anything. Like I literally can just roll with my arms or I literally like push forward. I don't like you can push forward with four wheel. I don't know. I love four wheels. I say four wheels over two. Everybody said the two wheels were better. I think they lied. And literally people who I am flying with and they see me with my two wheels and everything's stacked up. I just get bags that have like a uh, flap on the back that you put over. So all of mine are just stacked up tall. Uh, base B E I. IS. I used their bag for forever. It did rip and break in six months and is a hundred dollar bag, but I feel like it lasted me a really long time and I was really rough on it. Uh, but that's a bag that has like things on the back where you can put it over. So that one's really beneficial. I think their week their weekender bag and their like purse type tote um does have that. So I used that and then I got another one on Amazon that was one that I just put over, but I just stacked my bags up. Um, but I freaking love to like four wheels. I love four wheels. I feel like it's easy for me personally. So that's something that I feel like is a necessity and I have to talk about that because everybody stressed two wheels and I'm so glad I got four because I love my four wheels and everybody who asked me is four wheels better I'm like it's better and they're like I'm gonna get four wheels on my next bag so <laughs> I want to tell y'all the other thing was onboard shoes y'all people stressed on getting heels it is a requirement for the company I work for to have at least a one inch heel no one follows that so many people are flat but you need an onboard shoe so if you're gonna have a heel now there are girls I see they wear heels all day I'm not one of those girls I don't feel like doing that so I literally will have a pair of heels I do have the Clarks in the three inch I had them in the kitten heel which actually is the shoe I prefer and I probably will rebuy it at some point but I have tried all different types of shoes 
I love the onboard shoes. Onboard shoes are just flat pairs of shoes that you wear when you are not in the heels. You, as soon as you get on the plane, switch into the flats. They don't have to be cute. They can be the granny clog type shoes, like just uglies that you just have on when you're on the plane. Now, if you are flying any flights to like LA or New York, maybe don't put those on because there'll be so many celebrities on these flights. Don't risk it, babe. Don't risk the embarrassment <laughs> of having those granny clogs on while you got freaking like Usher or somebody. Like it's one of those things where uh, just having a comfortable bear, pair of shoes. They have to be black, but you literally can have like any type. There's don't, they can't be patent leather. Like don't bring the, the ballet shoes from pre-K. Um, but yeah, just onboard shoes. I got my last pair at like TJ Maxx or something. Before that, I got some uh, Clarks, but they were like cloud something flats, um, which I really, really loved. Um, so yeah, onboard shoes, absolute necessity. I didn't even talk about onboard shoes in my uh, original necessities video because I didn't know anything. <laughs> So the next thing is the hot logic. I talked to y'all about my hot logic while I was in my necessities video. My trainers had told me about a hot logic, but also like so many people stressed having a hot logic. Y'all can see I'm in my room right now. Y'all can't see the fridge. The fridge is in that first closet or whatever. There is no microwave. If I want to microwave my food, I literally have to go downstairs to microwave. Y'all don't understand after a long day, we just want to shower. You do not want to be walking downstairs to do anything. Like there's literally been, I swear to y'all, five maybe hotels I've been in that had a microwave in the room like five maybe and it's crazy because our hotels change all the time so it's like you just get a hot logic the thing is like thirty dollars it lasts forever i've had mine for a year nothing's wrong with it like i just don't understand why anybody would not have a hot logic you can put plastic in it glass whatever never melts never burns like you literally just set it in there zip it up around the bag plug it in and shower and it gets hot after like 45 minutes to like an hour. I literally fell asleep with food in there, woke up in the morning, now it was hot as I don't know what, but it was not melted, it wasn't burnt. But yeah, so get a hot logic because that is something where if you have food or you meal prep, like it is a necessity another one that I have on there as essentials is if you are a meal prep type person silicone um containers or like silicone like things that you can warm up we do have ovens on the plane so if you're ever in a flight silicone or glass I do use glass glass is heavy y'all it is heavy my lunch bag again is one that opens on the back I think I showed y'all my lunch bag in that um in that haul if I'm I swear I think I did um it has thing that goes over the back so it is pretty heavy when I have full glass for meal prep in but I just prefer to warm things up in glass I didn't see the silicone thing until like two weeks ago I saw a guy with silicone and I was like that's brilliant it's light it's easy it can go in the oven um but yeah so we do have ovens on the plane where you can warm up your food so if you are a like meal prep girly do that and also like get really good ice packs because ice packs are I swear like a flight attendant's everything like especially if you bring your own food um and it gets very expensive to eat out so you will eventually be bringing your own food but and then my last necessity and this is just ones that I feel like are my top five like my most important but if you are a nail girly if you are a nail girly there is a flight attendant I don't want to say flight attendant it's literally a can opener ring it's a ring with a little hook where you literally can pop the tabs on drinks without using your hands. I have literally broke so many index fingers on cans of coke that is like a flight attendant thing nails if you have any sort of nails and we do have like rules on nails but a lot of girls don't follow it anyway but um there are rules on nails and they can only be so long but this finger literally y'all I'll show you my nails are really grown out don't come for me I'm giving y'all advice but yeah so my nails are really grown out right now and y'all can see all of my nails are literally still on there so strong these are literally like forever old look at this one Ooh. the one nail that is freaking jack is this one because i open cans with it and it honestly i'm giving you the advice because i do have a can opener ring and i still never use it <laughs> um most people most people just use a hotel room key card so this is obviously my hotel room key card for the room i'm in right now but like literally like if you're taking a can just open pop the top this you're gonna have so 10 trillion of these um in your first year so yeah i think that's everything i think that's everything that i have if you guys have any other flight attendant questions this has been all over the place but i'm just like i'm tired i'm literally on two hours of sleep um if you guys do have any other questions leave them down below i'm gonna try and give you guys a little bit more flight attendant content 
I want to give you what you'd like, but I also don't want to become a flight attendant vlogger. I don't want to be like the flight attendant girlies. There's so many of them. There's so much advice out here. I don't want to do a video on how to get the flight attendant interview. <laughs> I know that's what y'all want so bad, but I'm like, there's so many videos and I promise they're going to give you everything. Um, support my fellow colleagues. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to try and give you guys as much as I can while keeping it on the Nani vibe of keeping it lax and chill and not so not so businessy like sit down and wear a white button up and this is what you say because it does not matter this job is very unique and these girls could give you all the advice in the world and if it's not you it's not you <laughs> and if it is you it is you like it's just so funny because I like watch these videos and like make sure you're all bubbly and blah, blah. I'm like not everybody is bubbly I had a girl in my class and I loved her we all loved her but she just had a straight face she had the raised eyebrow and all. And she was like, the reason why I wear a mask is because I have RBF under and like, just real, like real. And guess what? She was in flight attendant training. And it is not, she don't have to be a fake, but like be yourself, be yourself. And I know that's so corny to say that because people say that about YouTube. They're like, just be yourself. But it's so true. It's so true. Because if I came on here all the time and I was always happy, that would be the expectation of me. And that's not real. That's not real. Like being a person is just a unique experience. And this job is a unique experience where one airline, you may be way too quirky or weird or whatever. Another airline, likely Southwest, will be the one for you. What <laughs> I to say? I love you guys that work for Southwest. I'm so, I, I just think y'all are like so funny because those are the ones you see in their closing bins with their feet and like doing cartwheels and stuff. But um, find what's best for you and rock it out take care of your health take care of your minds make your money honey see the world and that's where we're at if y'all have any other questions for me leave them down in the comments i'm gonna try and give y'all more flight attendant content that is not flight attendant content as much as i can <laughs> um but until then keep watching my travel vlogs i'm gonna be going to some very fun places in july we in june we going to some fun places in july i'm taking a social media break on instagram so if you do have any questions make sure it's after july 13th because i won't be back until then um but i love you guys and i'll see you in the next one and happy flying bye guys small world with big dreams bad girl with big things nani you the drip queen elevator a big no deal nani na 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 top girl from atlanta Na ni na na na